Hi, I'm Dr. Greg Mundo, your friendly anatomy professor. This is our friend Dave. We're going to take a look at his spine. Come on in. So when we look at this model, first thing we see is that the spinal cord is encased in a bony structure here we're calling the, the, the spine. So we have seven, on an average person anyway, seven cervical, 12 thoracic, five lumbar, five sacral that are all fused together, and two, three, or four uh, coccygeal bones, depending on the person, were all slightly different. So what we're gonna see is that there are no ribs on the cervical spine. Ribs start here from the T1 until uh, T12. We see that the uh, first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, they're all true ribs. Uh, eight is also on this one. Nine, 10, 11, and 12 are false ribs. And what that means is that the costal cartilage, as it comes up, we see that these all connect to the sternum. But starting here at nine, they just kind of hang on for the ride with the others. So nine, 10 are just hanging on. 11 and 12 aren't hanging on to anything. They're just free floating. So those are called uh, false ribs, but these are floating ribs on top of that. If we look at the cervical spine, we see that basically the uh, skull is sitting on top uh, of C1, which has the nickname the atlas. C2 has the name, nickname at axis because it's basically uh, C1 is pivoting on it. Uh, we'll talk about the lumbar and those over here. So let's take a look at this other spine. So if we take a look, there's a few things I want you to see. One is that when we're looking at the cervical spine, we have the first two bones look quite a bit different than the rest. You can pretty much spot cervical bones for one thing, and that is that there's a hole here at an area called the uh, transverse foramen. Now what that is for is the vertebral artery. We have the vertebral artery which is uh, coming uh, with fresh blood up through the cervical spine and then goes in, sneaks through the foramen magnum, as you can see up here on the top. The very first cervical bone is this one called the atlas, C1, and we have the occipital condyles from the skull sitting upon this, and this is slightly different than any other in the regard that all of these bones have a spinous process, but C1 does not. So what we have here on C1 is an anterior and a posterior arch. We have lateral masses and we have the, still have the transverse processes where you do see the transverse ramen. These flattened surfaces are something called facets. Now what a facet is, um, is basically where two bones meet and touch each other. So on the bottom we called an inferior articulating facet, and on top the superior articulating facets because they articulate with the one above or below uh, accordingly. In the center here we see the vertebral canal uh, which the spinal cord is going through. So this is the first uh, cervical bone and uh, it is called the atlas. The second one is uh, C2. It's called the axis. Now what's different about this is this thing sticking up. You can call it one of two things. One is called the odontoid process and other people call it the dens. D-E-N-S. Well the dens is definitely easier to spelling a test uh, but what happens here is we see that C1 sits on top of that and oops sits on top of it and that's our pivot joint. And so we basically have the shaking of head no movement. Not tremendously because we would pinch off the cord, but there's slight movement there, along with the rest of the cervical spine giving you the, the big no movement. Um, there is a posterior uh, ligament that is uh, attaching these together so they can't slide. If they do slide, uh, basically you would have a uh, stroke of that cord and it would turn out very poorly, a paralyzation probably, or even death. So we have the C2 vertebra. There is now a spinous process. This one is bifid, which means it splits in two, and C2 commonly does that. We do have the superior articulating facets. Uh, we start having what's called the lamina here, and the uh, uh, pedicle is starting to form on this one. Uh, it's very small compared to others, and we have uh, the beginnings of what we call the vertebral body. Now you'll see this a lot clearer on the rest of the cervical bones. Now if you look at a cervical bone versus the thoracic and lumbar, they look quite a bit different. Uh, one is that the spinous process comes straight out, whereas on the thoracics it kind of sticks down at an angle, and in the lumbar it's really thick and kind of bony looking. We've uh, made kind of a, ways of remembering it in class, this kind of looks like a mouse, 
But this looks kind of like a, either a giraffe face or an elephant with the trunk hanging down, and that's its ears. And uh, we've nicknamed the lumbar the moose because it has all these crazy uh, different articulations or projections, I should have said. So when we look at the cervical vertebrae, again, we have the spinous process, we have a lamina, and then we have a transverse process. Between the transverse process and the body, we have the pedicle. Now these, again, have the foramen uh, in the transverse process for the vertebral artery. In the thoracic spine, we still have the spinous process and the transverse and the lamina between. You can see that the facets are at a little bit different angle, whereas in the cervical spine, facets are kind of going more flattened. In the thoracics, they're kind of more up and down at this angle, whereas in the lumbar, they kind of go forward, uh, you know, forward, straight forward. So we have the superior articulating facet here, inferior underneath, and uh, the vertebral body. What it should have grabbed uh, was in our thoracic so I could demonstrate the intervertebral foramen. Uh, this is a cervical bone, it's not really exact match, but what we see is that the pedicle of the bone below and above and the facets and the bodies with the, the, the uh, disc in between will form the uh, intervertebral foramen. So I guess it's best to see here. The intervertebral foramen is where we have the spinal nerve roots coming out. We have 31 pair. Uh, of spinal nerve roots, and again we have the pedicles, or sorry, the uh, pedicles and the uh, vertebral body, which is uh, between it with the disc that forms this hole. So we have it all the way up and down the spine. When you look at the lumbar uh, versus the thoracics, we still see the facet joints here and here. Uh, these are the transverse process. Uh, we do have a uh, heightened 